there and in today's video I'm going to be having a bit of a story time where I'm going to have a chat to you about how I got into adjudicating. Uh, that's what Dance Geek started as for me, was coming out of my um, work as a an adjudicator and just wanting to get more information out to people. Um, as an adjudicator, you kind of can't talk to people a lot. It's in the rules, you're not allowed to talk to the adjudicator. So, yeah, I just wanted to start Dance Geek so that I could get that out to people without breaking any of the comp rules. Um, I'm in prep at the moment for Coffs Harbour Steadford. It's going to be a big one. And um, <laughs> Giara in the background having a Harlow. Uh, and yeah, Kiara's going to come as my penciler, get to go up to Coffs and just have a beautiful time up there. And yeah, it got me thinking about um, how I got into adjudicating. Um, and I've also been thinking a lot about YouTube and what I'm doing on YouTube, what I want to do, what I don't want to do. I got into YouTube because I really like YouTube. I like watching it. Um, I... I love the variety you get on YouTube. Some of the stuff on YouTube I look at and go, oh, that is awful. But people like it, so cool. That's, you know, whatever. Um, I'm not turning my phone off at the moment. So, you know, there'll be messages coming through. It happens. It happens. Let's all deal with that. Um, also, it is an incredibly Melbourne day. So the lighting is going to go in and out. I've got my studio lights on but I'm also using natural light and it is just it's overcast and then it's sunny and then it's raining and it's it's a thing um, I love Melbourne but oof, four seasons in one day that is for sure why am I still talking about the weather I do it in every video really girl really really queen so story time how did I get into adjudicating I I always knew I wanted to adjudicate. My mum and I, the wonderful Helen Haywood, she and I would sit at comps and adjudicate when I was a kid. I, nev I, I don't remember a time where I would compete at comps and not go and sit in the, in the audience and adjudicate with mum. We would get the most out of our, our, seat, our session pass. Um, I'd get the most out of my competitors' pass and we'd go and watch. So once I was done, I'd go in and we'd try to get in and watch a full section. And we would we'd have our program and we would put a dot next to a competitor if they stood out to us. Um, and then we would write next to their name like what colour they were wearing so that we could remember them later. And if someone, if we're like, oh, the issue was with a good dot, and then someone else came on and we're like, whoa, it'd be like, big dot, big dot. Um, so it kind of became this like grading system of how large is the dot? And sometimes mum would put a dot and I'd be like, really? Are you kidding? And then same vice versa. Um, and that, I think it was where that whole idea, where I started to really see how adjudicating can be very subjective when you don't have a set grading structure, I suppose. Um, yeah, and anyway, so Mum and I did that and we loved doing it. I wish I'd kept some of my um, my old programs from comps because they were just full of dots and Mum's handwriting and all this stuff and it was very cool. Uh, so I always knew I wanted to be an adjudicator. I was always in awe of the adjudicators, for some reason even more so than um, the examiners at ballet exams or jazz exams. It was something about a comp adjudicator that just to me had this mystique. You, you didn't get as up close and personal with them as your assessment, um, your examiner, sorry, in a ballet, ballet exam. They're in the room with you. An adjudicator is up in the bio box. Or, a lot of the time they're like this like omnipotent voice just coming out of the speaker and you don't get to meet them. You don't get to see them. Or you might see them walking past. Oh, there's the adjudicator. Oh, my goodness. Um, and, you know, and they rang that bell. Oh, the sound of the bell. Oof. And to me, they were just these all-knowing dance gods. Um, now that I am an adjudicator, <laughs> that's not the truth. We are not all-knowing dance gods. But we do know a hell of a lot. And if you don't know a hell of a lot about dance, don't be an adjudicator. Um, there you go. There's the tea. There's the tea. And on that, I'm going to have a drink of not tea, but coffee. 
little bunny reference there for you. If you don't watch Graveyard Girl, please go and watch Graveyard Girl on YouTube. She is awesome. She is one of the OG YouTubers. She's going through it at the moment. She's so real and she is so freakish and amazing. We love her on this channel. Bunny, love you, baby. Love you. One of the biggest inspirations to me as a YouTuber um, is Bunny from Graveyard Girl. So go watch her. She's great. Anyway, I digress. Uh, so I had this image in my mind of what an adjudicator was. I was also a planner. Even as a little kid, I I planned where I wanted to go and what I wanted to do with things. And I'm not just talking about like, you know, for this next week or this next year. I planned the next five years and then I had a, like a 10 year plan and I, I, I was a bit intense. Okay. I'm a little bit intense. Um, and part, part of that for me included being an adjudicator. I always knew I wanted to teach at some point, but it wasn't something that I was like, I passionately want to teach. It was, I want to teach so that I'd be a better adjudicator. And it definitely helped me be a better adjudicator. Absolutely. Without a doubt, more so than even being a professional performer because teachers need Teachers know what the student goes through and adjudicators need to be aware of that as well, as far as I'm concerned. Um, yeah, so the actual, that's the sort of introduction to the story. The actual story of how I became an adjudicator um, is very much a series of fortunate events. Fortunate events, yeah. Um so, I live in Melton, which is a west suburb in the west of Melbourne, here in Victoria. Um, a very rare Saturday where I was actually home, because Saturdays are dance days, it's where you go to dancing, you teach dancing, yeah. Uh, I was home, I was in bed, and there was a dance comp in my hometown at the time, and apparently the adjudicator who was scheduled to be on was stuck in traffic way over the other side of the city and there was a chance she wasn't going to get there. Traffic coming out to the west can be really, really awful here in Melbourne and um, you can take a 40-minute drive and it turns into three hours very quickly. So um, the comp organisers were like, what do we do? My dear friend, uh, Rebecca Magazoo, who runs a dance school, she had some students at that comp. She found out what was going on and she said, look, I have a friend who's a teacher and she might be available if she lives down the road. Because I did, I lived down the road. And um, they're like, oh my God, please call her, call her. She called me, I was in bed. Um, I was in bed watching Hannah Montana, because <laughs> I love that show. Um, and I, yeah, I answered the phone. She goes, oh no, she texted me, that's right. And I read the text message. She's like, is there, random, random question, is there any chance you can adjudicate today? And I'm like, what? Um, maybe. I'm thinking she's like got a little in-house competition or something. I'm like, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. She goes, great. Mount and then she calls me. She goes, the mountain back. So she explained the situation, blah, 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 blah. And I'm thinking, what, an actual comp? I didn't say any of this, but an actual comp wanted me to adjudicate for them. And I'm, I'm like, uh -huh, um, yeah, all right. Yeah, sure, sure. I, can be there. I was pooping myself. Pooping. Puppies, what's up? Uh, it's school, home time. All the kids are walking home from school, so the dogs are going nuts. Hopefully it's not being picked up on my mic. No, it's not. Cool. You can't hear that at all. All right, so I'm, like, really packing it right now. But I was thinking, you know what? Mum prepared me for this. We were doing this at comps anyway, and... um. I've always been a little bit judgmental anyway, so <laughs> call on that skill. Um, and I just I just thought, you know what, no, I can do this. I can do this. I can bring a big different perspective. This is going to be exciting and I don't have to do this. And that's a big piece of advice to you if you are ever in a situation where you're really, really nervous to try and overcome those nerves try to figure out the exact reason why you're doing this. So this adjudicating thing, I didn't have to do it. I was asked if I was available and I had the opportunity to say, no, I don't think I can. They knew I'd never adjudicated before. 
Um, I was helping them out. And so I thought, you know what? Yeah, I can do this because I want to do this. And this is a really great way for me to get into adjudicating. So I got up, had the world's quickest shower, chucked some clothes on, and just as I was getting ready to go out the door and into the car, I got a message from the organiser, Christine, who said, thank you so much for being available to do this for us. Our adjudicator has arrived. I would love to talk to you later about adjudicating for us next year. Part of me was absolutely devastated. The other part of me was like, oh, thank God. Um, anyway, she did call me and we had a chat and I was very honest with her about how I've never adjudicated, but I feel like it's something I've always wanted to do. Told her a little bit about myself, all of that kind of job interview stuff, and she booked me then and there for next year's comp. Now, I didn't do the whole comp. She, um, This is one of those comps where they have quite a few adjudicators, changing it up a bit. Um, so I did a couple of days with them, and that was the year later. So I had like a whole year to figure it out. I didn't use a whole year to plan for one comp, but I did plan because that's what I do. Um, yeah, so I was very fortunate. A lot of the opportunities I've had in my life came because I work hard, I apply for the job, I, or I've gotten it through word of mouth because I've worked hard on something else and done, done good work on something else. Um, or I've gone to the audition and I've got it through that. Basically what I'm saying is, this story is one of the few stories in my life where something has just happened accidentally. Um, I, I, that, that never happens to me. I, I always have to go, uh, you know, the hard slog, that kind of thing. And, um, yeah, so adjudicating kind of just happened. But after that, the next job I got was because Christine referred another comp onto me. They, she gave them my, um, my details and said, call Claire, you'll love it. And I'm like, oh. That's nice. <laughs> and and then that happened the next time and the next time. So I got all of my other adjudicating jobs for the first three years. I didn't apply for any of them. They all approached me and I just, yeah, I was getting work through word of mouth because I worked hard at what I did and I tried to be um, true to myself and what I wanted, what who I am as a person and a dancer, but also just trying to always remember what it's like for that competitor on stage and what it's like for the teacher who's probably standing in the wings watching them like the, the wonderful nurturing caring parent that they are and so I, I've been in both of those positions and I always try to remember both of those people and the, what they've gone through to get there um, and I'm gonna be doing a separate video on if you want to get into adjudicating here's my advice um, but because clearly this video is not about, here's my advice on getting into adjudicating, because basically then I'd be saying, just lie in bed and watch Hannah Montana and wait for that text message. It's probably not gonna happen, okay? It doesn't happen in most things in life, so it's probably not gonna happen for adjudicating. Um, but that's how I got into adjudicating. Um, a series of events that just you know, led to that. I suppose there was an element of, I had to have kind of known what I was doing anyway, and had a good reputation for Rebecca to have suggested me in the first place. But let's be honest, if you're at a, if you're running a comp, like put yourself in their place. They were running a comp and they didn't have an adjudicator and they had a whole bunch of competitors, teachers, dance mums, an audience standing there ready to go and there's no adjudicator. Um, they'd have taken anybody who wasn't directly affiliated with one of those competitors, to be honest. They really would have, because they needed someone. Um, and it was just, I happened to be in the right place at the right time. On a side note, the adjudicator who was running late to that comp, it's often seen as a very, oh, very unprofessional. You know what? I'm gonna say a swear word, but shit happens, guys. If an adjudicator is ever running late, nine times out of 10, it is because something out of their control has happened. And I've worked with that adjudicator since, and she's awesome, um, really knowledgeable adjudicator, really lovely lady, um, and really hardworking, and she wouldn't have just, you know, 
oh, I slept in it, that that was not her. It was the bloody Westgate Freeway. Um, anyway, so long story, but that's, that's how I got into adjudicating. How I stayed in adjudicating, though, was by knowing what I was talking about, and even when I didn't know what I was talking about, I made sure I had my, sh my notes there. Um, yeah, so whilst the first, my first adjudicating job was a lucky accident, every other one after that is because of having, establishing a good reputation and working well with others. Networking is a huge, huge deal in our industry, guys. Most, we want to, we're artists and we're incredibly passionate and we're incredibly emotional and and insert Goldie Horn where, you know, from First Wives Club, I have all the emotions. Um, so we'd rather work with people that we're comfortable with and that we know. So networking is so important because most of the time you'll get jobs because people know that you're reliable, they know that you're not going to let them down, they know that you work in this way, they know that you have the same kind of ideals as them and um, or you've been referred to them by someone that they trust and that's how I hired most of my staff when I was running a school, when I was running a show, everyone, I never ran auditions, everyone was invited to be yeah. in my show um, because I wanted people who I knew and who could build what I wanted to build with the show and I think that's why I've gotten so many of my adjudicating jobs have been through word of mouth because a comp wants somebody who's going to be reliable and knowledgeable and I mean think about when you've been at comps as a competitor or a teacher, if the adjudicator isn't good and if the adjudicator is making really weird decisions or if they're only rewarding the people that are doing um, tricks or if they're, oh it's one of those adjudicators that only likes the ballet dancers or whatever. Um, it reflects badly on the entire event. So nailing getting the right adjudicator for that comp is really important to comp organisers. So I've just tried to make sure that I'm easy to work with, that I'm fast in what I'm doing, but also that I'm thorough. Um, I will be going through how I adjudicate in another video without giving away all of my training but I will be going through that. Um, and yeah, just to give you a bit of an insight into what it's like sitting on the other side. Um, yeah, so my son's just gone home from school and we're gonna go to swimming. I'm not swimming because I'm not messing up this face or this hair, but I do wanna watch him because I love watching my boys in the pool. Cut this out. Um, yeah, I wanna go and spend some time with my boys. Um, I will be at Coffs Harbour, Estedford, Coming up next, I'm adjudicating the solos. I'm super excited because I love the area of Coffs and I was there last year for their groups weekend and it was so much fun. Love the committee and it was, yeah, I'm really excited. So if you're at Coffs, um, you can't come up and say hi to me because it's against the rules, but please wave or send me a DM on Instagram or something like that and I'll be like, yay! Um, and yeah, let's have some fun. See you guys. Bye.